Welcome to version 11. In this session, we're going to discuss the new start and end modes that are available. We're going to be doing a widening to a string and transitions at the start and the end. At this stage, we've applied a full template from the start to the end of the job. So the modifier we're going to do is a two string modifier. The design string we wish to modify is our curb lip. We're going to widen the um, uh, string and hold the cross fall. So in previous versions, the string we wish to widen out to is this string here, an alignment string. We would have chosen lowest drop change of other string. In that case, we would have had to pick the string. And again, for the end change, highest drop change and pick the string. And then finally, again, select the string we want to widen out to. So in version 11, to cut down the number of picks that you have to do, we have a new option called lowest drop change of the modifier string. As you'll see, there's no string to pick. Highest drop change of modifier string. And then finally, you select the modifier string. So go back to my design and apply. So we now see the modifier. The modifier in version 11 also shows you the distance uh, in the uh, yellow text here. Uh, that is the length of the uh, modifier from start to finish. We now wish to tie in, so we need to tie in at the start of the job and the end of the job. Again, the modifier after is a fixed link modifier. So the name of the string we wish to modify is again the curb lip. We're going to widen and hold the cross fall and replace the current value with whatever the value is here to whatever that new widened value is. So rather than go through and pick all those strings again, version 11 has an option which allows you to refer to a previous chosen start or end mode. So the transition is going from here to here. So the end mode of this transition is actually going to refer to the start mode of that modifier. So let's do the end mode first. So I can go relative to the previous start. So it's talking about the line number, or in this case, one line number previous to this one. So you have to say what number you want to go back. So that's the actual setting of the end change. The start change is, is 30 metres back from that change. So instead of having to repick this all again, we now have an option in here to say relative to the self end. So whatever this modifier is here that I pick for the end, I'm going to be relative to that. So again, I can now go minus 30 metres back. The type of modifier I want, I want to use a new position position. So now in that case, it will determine whatever the width is here to whatever the new width is there. I apply, and it does the widening for me. So again, the other tie-in at, at this end here, again, if we insert, we just copy that modifier down. In a similar fashion, uh, in this case here, the uh, try-in modifier, the start change is actually the same as the end change of this modifier. So now I can do the start change first. So I say relative to previous start. How many rows back is it? It's actually two rows back in this case. And again, the end option says relative to its self-start. So I want to be 30 metres further on. And I can go apply. I apologise, in that one there, it's relative to the previous end command. We go apply. So little mistakes like that are quite easy to alter inside 12D. So I'm selecting start and end modes and saying previous and trying to remember which line number you have to go back. We can also go back to the previous or the initial modifier that we did and we can then say that the uh, start and end mode that we've selected for this, we want to save and reuse in these two modifiers. So in, in this case, we can save that as, as an alias. So we could call that curb widen. Again, apply. So now when I go to this widen modifier or the, or the tie-in modifier, instead of going relative and stepping back the number of uh, lines, I can now go and select relative to the alias start. And the alias I want is curb widen. So I have exactly the same process, but a little bit easier to pick. If I then go to my last tie-in modifier here, 
and again it's saying relative n you have to control the number of rows back instead you can now just go relative to an alias end and say apply and the alias we want is curb widen and apply so if we are going to use these connections or these start and end modes quite a lot through the job then it, is, it would be desirable to set up the aliases prior to starting your actual design. So in this case here, I've set an alias up and the alias is the lowest drop change and highest drop change of that string. To set an alias up is under interval alias. As part of our job, we've also set up an alias for a particular curve. So in this case here, we've got a curve, and we've named that part as our horizontal, as our name part in our reference string. It's called curve 30. So the start and end points is the name part start of this curve. So again, if I pick that, we can see that's the primary part, the start segment, and the start point. And again, for the end of the curve, I pick up the um, start of the, of the end of the curve. So in that case, if I then start to do modifiers for this, and I'm, typically you would be doing a, maybe a, a super elevation modifier, I can then refer to the alias parts of that curve to develop the super. So we now look at how that type of super elevation and widening would work. We can go back to our uh, alias, and the alias has been set up for this particular curve, again as the start end of the curve. The widening itself is a uh, width modifier to the two strings and we're using the start of the curve and the end of the curve. So again, relative to the alias start, relative to the alias end. We need to be 10 metres further on from the tangent point for the uh, full super and 10 metres back from the tangent point for the, for the full super. The full super elevation we're going to apply is 3%. The tie-in points, as previously for the widening, we're now going to do reference the alias start again. So we're going to be the alias start and we're going to go minus 30 metres back and 10 metres back this way. So again, we're utilising the, the alias start point and then these relative extensions from that point to define where the super elevation starts and where it ends. Similar to the width modifier, we're able to go crossfall and whatever the crossfall is at the moment using this pause pause option. So whatever the crossfall is on the straight and whatever the crossfall is here via this modifier, the last start in mode we're going to look at is one used for when we place uh, snippets. In this case here, we're going to place uh, uh, driveway snippets along our curb and they're going to be placed uh, at the occurrence of these strings drawn on a particular model. So again, we go to snippet and we select our driveway. So the, the, um, in this case, only the start mode is needed. So we select, uh, place the snippet to a model of strings. And the model of strings that we want are these driveway strings that I've drawn. And again, we go apply. So in this case here, it's, it's done the driveway for us. And so if we add to that driveway model, we'll get extra driveways. Or if we actually edit the strings in that driveway model, it will be reflected via this start mode. 